Coming to you from the heart of the Pacific, brought to you by Paulie by Design. It's respected at all times. Broadcasting from San Francisco, California, the city by the bay. It's about to go, it's about to go down. We shine on positive Pacific Islander role models every Sunday. Party on a Sunday. From 10 a.m. to noon, it's time for the iconic Hiker Podcast with your host, Listening to Naki and Carl. What's up, what's up, Naki? What's up? You ready? I'm ready. I don't know if we're going to get it all in an hour today. A lot we, of stuff to talk about. But we can go past an hour if we Can want. we? Yeah, you the we boss. Can. If you want to go longer, <laughs> we go longer. We go longer. Good morning, FICA family. Season 5, episode 21. I'm your host, Carl. With me, your lovely co-host, Naki. Good morning, Naki. Good morning. Today, boy, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk Lots. about Snacky with Naki. Yes. We're going to talk about... A package that we got today in the office, and we didn't mm-hmm. know who it was from, and it is a um, a moment from the heart as we open yeah. these packages in the in the studio today. We added it to the agenda on mm-hmm. the moment. We immediately knew we needed to talk about that. We're going to talk about Koviki Talk with the Oregon Pacific Islander Coalition and the great leaders they have up there. Congratulations, oh congratulations to Manu Malo. We will go through um, the big move that uh, Man- Malo made. And we're going to talk about some of the um, picks in the NFL draft. Uh, mm. A whole bunch of Pacific Islanders went. We're going to talk about three of them. Uh, one of them went to the 49ers. Um, one went to the Bears from BYU. And the other one went to the Oregon Lions in the, the seventh pick overall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about our community programs we got going on. That is our show today with our check-ins. Don't let me forget that. I know. I know. Big shout out to uh, people tuning in to the FICA podcast this morning. We have Mel, our Mel who's checking in in Las Vegas. Good morning, Mel. We have Phyllis um, Mosa Seal. So Phyllis with us this morning. Phyllis. Phyllis, maybe you're related to Panay. We're going to be talking about him this morning. So um, the draft was this week, of course. But this week um, we had like tons and tons of stuff um, happen this week. This uh, We went to, um, um, well, we had Koviki talk. Are we talking about Snacky with Naki right now? Uh, that's That could be a topic. It's yeah. check in. I mean, uh, you did do that. Yeah, you spent yeah, the day yeah. doing that. We'll go into I the did, details did later. Um, I got a T-shirt from Two Hunnett, who was a guest mm-hmm. on one of our shows. Um, Puka uh, Melissa. I don't know if you can see my shirt, but it has Two Hunnett on it. Um, he's a Bay Area Pasifika entrepreneur. So, of course, we encourage you to shop Pasifika. Um, let's see. Uh, Phyllis says tweak manuia love 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 your podcast thank you thank you for all you do love you mel thank you for tuning in like we appreciate you i went to um a family uh funeral this week uh tanu mamea who is like he's a big uh teamster um supporter uh prom- member of the church member of the church he's one of the board of directors for um you know uh pastor to Fuli's church and he had a the his funeral was this week uh his uh, burial was monday the church was packed Everyone had a mask on, which I love, but it was packed upstairs. It was packed in the parking lot. It was packed in the front of the church. There were so many people from the Bay Area that I hadn't seen in like years. And so good morning, uh, Maury's checking in on Facebook. So we get to the parking lot of Tafuli Church parking lot uh, in Daly City, and we pull in, me, Mo, and Minna, and cars are starting to roll. I've never seen that parking lot so busy. Cars start to roll in, and we get out of the car. We're like, hi, hi, hi. And I'm like, let's get in the church because I need a seat. I am not standing. And so we get into the church. We get in the back, and we sit. And then Mo, I usually do not like to go to say goodbye to whoever mm-hmm. has passed because I just— do you not like seeing them in I that? I just, I don't like it, to you see. You feel like it's not them? Or? No, I just, I just don't. Like my aunt that passed, or our aunt that passed away, uh, Auntie Molly, years and years and years ago. I just, I think I was 12 or something like that. And I just, I didn't like seeing her in that. Mm-hmm. And so it's always stuck with me. So I never. Um, but I went and he, um, 
he looked like he was just, you know, resting. So anyway, on our way back, we see everybody like you go with your back to the church. And then when you turn around, you're facing everybody. So I seen a lot and lots of faces I haven't seen in a long time. And it was so nice to see old family members and church members. Um, they had low riders and really old school cars there. Men took a lot of um, pictures. So if you... Um, if you go and follow Mena on Instagram, you'll see all the beautiful pictures that she took of the cars and people that were there. And so um, the church was, I didn't realize how packed it was until like an hour in. And so um, after a while, I left because it was getting too crowded and Mo wanted to listen to people's testimonies. But I went outside and there was Helen, who is, um, if you know Big Body Radio, Big Body Cisco, his mom, had his parents had moved to Utah. And I seen her and Cy, and um, I got to talk to her and catch up. It was nice to see her. I mean, tons of people. Ton I just, I can't even name them. I heard that it was big, but I didn't until uh, Mena had posted the pictures. Yeah. And I got to look at the pictures. Right. You could see just how busy and how full. Right. And, you know, the, the group of people that showed up. Yeah. Um, you know, back to, you know, seeing the person in the casket. So you yeah. don't normally go up there. I and don't you, normally. You attribute that to when you were 12 and Auntie, Mo Auntie yeah. Molly's funeral? I do. I mean, not that I don't go. I don't like to go. But Mo, that's his. He likes to go and say goodbye. Uh -huh. And so I, he's like, come on, let's go. And I want to support him. So I go with him. But I don't really, I try not to look or I try. Um, but Tanu looks so, I mean, he had his shades on. He had, I mean, it looked like him. I you think know. that, um, not to throw age out there but when we were young like when you were 12 i think embalming has come a long ways because i said i thought the same thing when i was a kid uh -huh. i would look and it didn't like it kind of creeped me out mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that didn't really look like my grandfather or it didn't right. really look like you know whoever had passed yeah but now like you go to a casket now and i don't know if like the technology or something yeah. has changed but they actually look yes. like the person right. right and i think that's it because lately we've been we've gone to a lot of funerals unfortunately and they look like themselves. Right. So um, I think that's it. Yvette, good morning, Good morning, Yvette. Yvette. Phyllis says, yes, Panay is my brother Gabriel's son. Okay, Phyllis, I sent Panay an email. Tell him to go check his email. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, congratulations to your family. So I went to that. All these beautiful old school cars were there. And it was really, it reminded me of, uh, this is going to age me, but, 24 and mission <laughs> 24 and mission every weekend it would be packed with low riders old school cars and so um it was beautiful to see i did see big body cisco um um who else um uh eli from the music, the box. music box show enough entertainment show enough entertainment i mean there was it was beautiful i seen um people from la haven't seen tanu's sisters uh lonnie and our cousin um, was there I, did, I saw her on the, uh, the live on the live yeah. i was looking at the live and the camera pan ba yes. pass and i was texting you and i go is nelly yeah nelly there? was there so it was good to see everybody good to catch up um it was at um Pastor Tufuli's church, which, like I said, which is in Daly City, and I was raised in that church, so it was good good to see it full. I kind of got a panic attack because there were so many people in there that I had to leave. Um, I don't know. I think because of COVID, I'm freaked out. Um, so I kept my mask on the whole time, and it's awful that um, I would keep my head down when walking through crowds because I just, I didn't want to, um, I just, I don't know. It freaked me out. Like, right. yeah, you know, because I've had COVID and it was, it was the most awful experience I've ever had in my life. And so I just, I know I shouldn't have been there. But the good thing is where I work, they test me every week. So I went to, as soon as I got back to work, I was like, when do I test? And so um, I tested negative for COVID. Thank you very much. So I get, get that news every yes. week. I every get a week text. I get that. Every week I, I get a text. Negative. <laughs> every every week I get tested, and it really um, it's for my work because I work for police services. But it really gives me a peace of mind. Um, I really don't go anywhere. That was the first outing that I've had, um, and so um, yeah, so it was good to see people this week. I seen Danny Boy, um, Nani Wilson, who was with Asian American Recovery Services, and she's also my sister cousin. Um, but yeah. Um, funerals have been so sad, um, but it, the, 
this one we celebrated his life, so it was really good. Um, what else happened? Uh, we did Snacky with Naki, which was amazing. And then, um, yeah, this month is Pacific Islander Month, where you you going to ask me 50 million questions about Pacific Islanders, but at Poly by Design, we celebrate Pacific Islanders every day, um, every chance we get. I think that's what our page is about. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy that they recognize Pacific Islander Month, but we do it every day, folks. We do it every day. So <laughs> we celebrate that every <laughs> we day. We celebrate every day because, you know, our, our people are pretty amazing. And so uh, what else happened this week, Minna? Mena is our producer slash child. <laughs> um, she makes it happen. She makes it happen. I seen Biden had a speech, but I didn't. I didn't listen. I just. I don't know. I just didn't listen. Uh, but I did see the picture of him, and then behind him, Nancy Pelosi, and then Vice President Harris. Um, it was kind of an awesome picture. I know people don't agree with whatever. I just thought it was an awesome picture to see two women. Madam uh, Speaker and yes. Madam Vice President. Yeah, I just thought it was awesome. Don't come for me because I don't really know politics like Carl, but I just thought it was an awesome picture um, standing behind Biden. You know, it was just awesome. So I don't know what he talked about. I don't know that nothing. I just seen that his, his uh, he's had a speech, and um, that you noticed the two ladies. Were I them. noticed VP uh, Pelosi and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. So there you go. That was my two cents. We had FICA this week on Tuesday. Um, tons and tons of. I mean, like we had so much happen, and I just want to get to your check in um, first before, uh, before we get, we into, get the into it. I also wanted to wish Dr. Reno Samoa a happy birthday this week. This week was his birthday, so big shout out to the doctor. The doctor. The doctor. We love, love, love you. He's so. got so much stuff going on. I don't know how he makes all the meetings. He's busy. And the meetings are normally he's wearing his white coat. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's at he's work. He's in his office. And it's at nighttime. And I don't know what yeah. his shift is, but I yeah. know that his work never stops. I'll put it that way. I yes. don't know what shift he works, but he's always working. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like we had a meeting uh, with Dr. Tuesday. Nia Tuesday. Tuesday? So yeah. Dr. Nia is in Arkansas. So it was like 9 or 10 o'clock her and time. she had a call 7 after. 7 p.m. Right. And, and Dr. Samoa gets on. And uh, it's like 8 p.m. and he's literally in his office. And then, of course, we talk on his way home, but that's okay. And Joseph Saya, who is um, in Washington, he gets on with his ear. Well, we are having an earring competition. There's no competition. There's a com I know. There's well, there's not. no competition like, because he out earrings he you every <laughs> show. <laughs> no, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph Saya, I'm coming for you. So yet yeah, now I'm careful with the earrings that I choose. So if you, if you I look want at the Joseph agenda, to see my earrings and you. You see if Joseph's on because yeah. if he's an attendee, you're yeah. gonna wear a special pair of earrings. And right? he's one of our guests tomorrow on Kovi Talk, oh, so I'm I'll be coming strong. You should to see what earrings you wear tomorrow. Yeah, so there you go. That was my week. Patsy Tito, executive director for Samoan Community Development Center, is checking in on Facebook. That's perfect. We just talk about Dr. Nia and yes. then Dr. Samoa yeah. and then Patsy Tito's on the sh Patsy on the show. Patsy Tito, so. powerful Pacific Those Islanders, are big names. Moving Movers and shakers and yes. people that are lifting our people. That's right. Look at you. So um, Pacific Islander Month, you know, like I said, we celebrate every day. That is my check-in. Go, Carl. Um, <laughs> so uh, the it's Asian American Pacific Islander Month, and I got selected at my company to talk about that. Oh. So I'll be on, nice. I don't know, our intranet or something talking about uh, the Pacific Islander piece Can of I it. Can I tune in? No, no, no. Yeah, actually. Okay. I'll I'll show you the video Send when we're done. The, no. Can I tune in while you're going? No, it's on oh. our company intranet. Oh. Um, so I'll do something there. They're, they're, looking, they're looking for quotes. They're mm. looking for... Um, you your know. favorite quote from your, what is it, your CEO or something like our that? Our CEO said it at his first meeting that uh, role models come in brown. Yay! So that's a Fortune 400 company CEO uh, saying the words that Naki says on our show. Yeah. I was happy to hear that. I had said it in a earlier earlier session. The MC um, had asked, was just calling people in the crowd, mm -hmm. and he 
they had my profile up and it talked about poly by design. So he wanted to know about that. And this is when everybody's getting seated, yeah. right? And this is 2018. And so the MC said, well, where's Carl Johnson? Let's have him stand up. And this is in a room of like 800 people. Dang. And so I stand up and I actually sat where I sat so I wouldn't end up. Because if you sit all the way in the back, that's where they go. Because uh, it's a huge room. So yeah. they'll go straight to the back to pick people to talk randomly. Yeah. So we didn't sit all the way in the back. And then we didn't sit near the aisle so that you didn't get picked <laughs> off by somebody. So yeah. before the meeting even really starts, they've already got the microphone uh, over there. And they're uh -huh. like, tell us about, you know, this thing that you and your cousin started. And, you know, you know, our we can say... We started this to push and promote positive Pacific yeah. Islander, you know. So yeah. the piece of it where I said, you know, we want to show the younger generation that role models come in brown. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you always say on the show. And so um, the room was kind of quiet. Like people were like, what did he, what? And I hear a voice. There's one lady, female voice that I can hear like screaming, you know, cheering. Yeah. And I was like, well, there's, I got one fan out there. Okay. Um, so later in the program, our brand new CEO, he'd only been with us for two weeks, comes up and he starts talking about how um, how much of a champion of diversity he is mm -hmm. and how much he believes in it. And he said, just right in the middle of it, he goes, role models come in brown. Who said that? I love that. I love that. And people look back mm -hmm. and these are the people that might not have cheered as loudly as when I said it. Yeah. But at that point, they were kind of like, oh, he's, he's in line with the new CEO. And those yeah. are actually your words. So... Fast forward to 2021, and the director of diversity and inclusion calls me up and says, hey, we'd like you to be the chair for the uh, Pacific Islander piece of, of American, Asian American Pacific Islander Month. And she goes, you probably don't know how, how much of a fan I am of yours. And I was like, oh, she's talking about Poly by Design. Mm -hmm. No, she was talking about, um, she goes, you stood up in front of everybody and said, that role models come in brown. Like you said something in a room full of people that was forward thinking and you said it with like it didn't even, you didn't even think about it. Like, should I say it? Should I not yeah. say it? And it's things that we do that just roll off our tongue, right? Like, Naki, what do we do when we're in a meeting? Yeah. And then you, we just, I we just can go. say that in our, yeah. we can say that in our sleep, sleep. <laughs> right? So it just was something that came natural to me. And she goes, yeah, you said that. And I looked around and people were like, what did, did he just make it about race? Like, what, right. what did that guy say? And she was the one that was cheering, cheering. and screaming, the yeah. one voice that I heard. So I end up talking to her, and then she, you know, signs me up to work with work for the company in celebrating uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. Um, I do want to say, you know, kind of on that topic of uh, AAPI, there's a big push right now to to disaggregate the AA and the PI. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I was listening to uh, Fasoa Manatu um, from SCDC on, I think it's Tuesday, mm -hmm. whatever that, that show is. And Alicia Tulua and D-Boy were on there. And they were talking about how much work the Asian American and Pacific Islander people did together years ago, decades ago, to be recognized at all. Mm -hmm. And now... We've grown as we as in Pacific Islanders have grown enough to the point that we want to disaggregate and have, you know, our own our identity. Own, right. But there's like and Elise said it, that there's almost like a violent push to disaggregate. Like, you know, the Pacific Islanders are like, no, we're not a P.I., we're P.I. Uh -huh. And they were talking about how important it is to recognize the work that the A.P.I. did for decades together mm -hmm. as we separate and go our own ways. And it really resonated to me that. Um, we're all people of color. And so while we may be emerging and getting our own identity and becoming disaggregated from a data standpoint with the, the government, it is important to recognize how much work was done together with, the, with our Asian brothers and sisters to get where we are today. And I wasn't able to watch the whole show with those two, mm -hmm. but I caught that piece of it. And it really struck a nerve with me about, hey, let's be careful and speak correctly when we disaggregate from the A piece of the API mm -hmm. and recognize whose shoulders we stand on. And that's the, the groups that did the work for decades being together as a group. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a big piece of my week. Um, 
what else did I did? I did, we did Koviki Talk um, with Manu Malo, Ala Ilima, Kumu Le Aloha Kaula, and Jesse Gasper Jr. Yeah. Um, that was amazing. And, you know, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on our page. It's on the COVID-19 response team page. But a big piece with me was the promotion of Manu Malo to executive director. Right. And that was. That was awesome. That's a big move. That's and you a and I big, know how big scary that would be, move. right? Yeah. So I'm so proud of him. I'm proud that he took that step and stepped out into his, his light, right? Um, Oregon Pacific Islander Coalition is who we had on this week for Koviki Talk. Um, Malo and Jesse and Kumu are all doing amazing work in Oregon. And we just, it was Jesse's birthday. So happy birthday, Jesse, again. Mm -hmm. um, but Malo, for um, him to step out, because Malo was working for, I, was, I, think, I believe, the Red Cross for over 15 years. So to actually give your notice and to step out to do the work right. that he started, you know, Utopia PDX um, is and you think Freaking about that. amazing. It's essentially what you're doing when you do that, and mm -hmm. you and I are going to do that at some point, right. some point in the near future, right. is like you're stepping into it to do one job. Right. Because essentially right now, you got two full-time jobs. Exactly. You do 40 hours plus for right. PBD a week, right. and then right. you got your own 40-hour-a-week job. Right. So, you know, when you see people of the community that are going to jump into, quote, just that, mm -hmm. it's really... Just it's just separating themselves from a whole full time job to right. continue doing a full time job. Yeah. It's not like they got, and they'll do more work. Yeah, I mean now, they're gonna fill it up. Now he did, you know, forty hours for Redwood, a uh, Red Cross, and forty hours for Utopia PDX. Well, now Malo is gonna do eighty hours right, of right. Utopia PDX. I know him; he gonna do that. So he's not gonna uh, slow down. Yeah. Not not slowing down at all, but I was so proud of him just because that's a scary move. Like, I always think of that. Like, I'm kind of scared to step up, you know. But it's it's huge and it's and it's an amazing, amazing thing. So congratulations. I cleaned my garage yesterday. Uh huh. And uh, what did I learn? So I found some cool old pictures. As you know, you clean out the clean out places. You oh, see yeah, things like yeah, you yeah. haven't seen in a yeah. long time. Um. But you also figure out certain things about I did physically. I am not in shape at all. Like <laughs> I was wore out halfway through the day. I was like, okay, I need a break. Uh, I need something to eat. I got to keep drinking water. <laughs> I got to slow down and pace myself. And this is cleaning out a garage. It was, um, so we have, we ordered new garage doors. Nice. And they weren't supposed to come until a lot later. And then they called on Friday and they're like, oh, they're in. So... We got to have them able to get to all the places in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to move all the stuff out. And if you're going to move it, you're going to touch it. You're going to figure out, am I going to keep this? Am I going to donate it? Am mm -hmm. I going to throw it away? So all day yesterday I was doing that. And, man, I am not cut out for manual labor for working like that. I slept like a log last night. I was out. Okay, let me just put my two cents in. You got two cents? I got two cents. <laughs> you have just recently ended five weeks five days a week of radiation mm. mister so you're still recovering from that so f in for you to even be able to do that is freaking badass so mm. there you I go i didn't feel badass yesterday but i appreciate the thoughts um that let's see yeah, big meetings, big meetings this week. Mm. Uh, Koviki Talk really taken on a, a, a life of its a, own. A life of its own. That's exactly how I'd put it. It yeah. is growing to become. Um, heck, Koviki Talk might be bigger than Poly by Design right now. Who yeah. knows? But yeah, uh, a big future for the Koviki Talk format. Big meetings with uh, big names and things just look bright for. The future of Poly by Design. So yeah. I'll leave it at that. Everybody's going to see new things that are coming out and the things that we're going to begin doing. Yeah, and stay the tuned. Team's excited. Stay tuned. Um, big shout out to um, Lena Manu, Manu Leleua, oh, who's morning, checking Lena. in on Facebook. Our Leah Puasa is on with Dr. Leah. Tai Fa'aleava. Got so many doctors. Dr. Tai Associating Fa'aleava. PI doctors. Yes. Isn't that amazing? We it can is. say doctor uh, and a PI name follows after Dr. Tai Faleava. 
um, is checking in on Facebook from the kingdom of Vacaville. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're... Um doesn't he run a uh, PI clinicians? There is a he PI and, clinician uh, uh, group. Um, Monomalo, yeah, Mosel. yeah, yeah. They have a uh, those are all clinicians. Yes, like, this is a great time. Yeah, we. I eventually, when I have time, like my schedule is crazy, I would like to pick off each of their brains and have. Um, them on individual well we've had Ty on a couple of times and so um, but Jake and and um, to be mm-hmm. right and then there was a, another young lady um, who just showed up on Instagram who I started following so I'll have to reach out to her but it's awesome 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 uh, NFL draft was this week NFL drafts this week NFL draft can so, I just go ahead let's talk about the Niners oh my god let's talk about the Niners First of all, I want to talk about the quarterback. Like, the dude's only started 17 college games. But he better be, and you and I talked about this, Mm -hmm. for what the Niners traded to pick up that quarterback. This is the one. This has got to be a Joe Montana, Steve Mm Young-level quarterback to be worth what the 49ers have given up. This is the one. This is the guy? This is the guy. Alex, Alex, what is his name? I see, I Smith. They... Picked Alex Smith over the Green Bay guy. Was Rogers? it Green Bay? Yeah, Rogers. Aaron Rodgers from Northern California, that and the Niners didn't pick him up. That killed me. That killed me, and then I was hate. I just was a hater for Alex Smith. And then who was the other guy? Um, the one Take with the knee. knee. Take a knee. Uh, look, I, Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. He killed me. Uh, first. First and five, he couldn't get in the zone. I didn't like him after that. You know what's that. funny is this is uh, Naki's like, no, I don't like, I don't dislike him because of the take a knee thing. That's not yeah, it at no, all. Yeah, no, that's totally and she awesome. was like, I don't know, and I don't know. I go, well, maybe being first and goal and not being able to get he you, goes, get that's in. why I don't like him. He couldn't <laughs> he get couldn't in. Win. I love, I love his character that he took a knee. It was a silent protest, and then we everybody bashed him um, for his silent. Pro- okay, I'm going left on. A silent protest, and then people climbing over the wall, uh, the Capitol building. It n- nobody's tripping. Like people are tripping, but they ain't tripping as hard as when Kaepernick took a knee. So I absolutely adore his ca- character and the person, the person that he is. But not getting it in uh, killed me. Um, so <laughs> first and goal, can first do it. and goal killed me. That was it for me. I wasn't feeling him. This kid. I'm feeling this kid. This is my quarterback. This this is my quarterback. Gotta be Steve Young, Joe, Big Joe, Big Joe, Joe Montana level. He's gonna do it. Trey Lance from North Dakota State. He he's he arrived in the Bay Area this week. What's Garoppolo? Whatever how you say. He's his still name. your starter I, this week. Yeah, I wasn't I mean, feeling year, him either. It, it just they were overdoing him when he first came to the. You ain't going to like anybody that doesn't win you Super Bowls. No, no. I'm (laughs) feeling this kid. I may be eating my words. Uh, No, I'm not going to eat my words. Uh, This is the kid. Um, Yeah, so the Niners picked up Trey Lance from North Dakota Big kid. Athletic. Got a big arm. uh, Yeah. Goes through the reeds. Yeah. To me, very, I mean, they got to have a big plan for this kid on how to develop him. He's only started 17 games. They're starting to uh, build uh, a new team, I believe. They're starting. They've picked up a lot of new kids, some Bay Area kids, which is awesome. Uh, Aaron Banks is guard from Notre Dame. Oh, oh. No, look at you. Oh, 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 oh. I did my research on who they picked up. Trey Sermon from Ohio State, a running back. Or, yes, uh, Aubrey Thomas, center, cornerback from Michigan. About Talanoa Hufanga. Tala, I'm getting to oh, him. Okay, all right, I, all right. I'm trying to list all the people. Jalen Moore, he's on the O-line, Western Michigan. This name is a killer, though. Dio Mador. Dio Mador Lenore, CB from Oregon. Talanoa Hufanga, safety from USC. Um, Elijah Mitchell, running back from Louisiana. That's as far as I got. But I'm like, look at that team. Enough for the 49ers. Yeah, they didn't pick up a wide receiver, (laughs) though. They didn't pick up a wide receiver. 
First time since 2002. Yeah. Boom. How about that? Look How at me. How about that? Look at you Look talking at me. NFL draft. Look at me. We're going to have an NFL draft with Naki. Drafty with Naki next year. Drafty <laughs> with Naki. Drafty <laughs> with Naki. How about that? But um, I did like that the Barrier kids are coming back home, um, that um, Aaron Banks, um, you know, his family grew up in the Bay Area, uh, Najee Harris. Steelers. Steelers yeah. from Antioch. Yep. Bay Area kid. Works out with Marcus Antioch. Malou. Yes. That, and I had no clue about him until um, Najee Harris. He's The only reason why I knew who he was was because when he was in high school, Marcus Malou, um, who is out of Antioch, uh, he has a gym there. Please go check it out. Um, support your PI uh, business. Yes. He would post... Uh, pictures of him he works out with a bunch of kids a bunch of people go to him um, to get really good workouts and he trains these kids and he was working out with um, Harris mm -hmm. when he was like a freshman or even earlier than that I can't remember but he was saying he kept saying this kid is gonna go to the NFL he's that good so the Steelers pick up Najee Harris yes. from Alabama mm -hmm. um, who's the all-time leading rusher at Alabama so you think about all the big names that right. have gone through Alabama yes. he's the all-time leading rusher at Alabama right. um, and you know the, of course the Steelers pick him up I'm a fan yes. but I'm even more of a fan because his draft party right. he held at a homeless shelter in right. Richmond where right. he used to live. He and his right. family lived for a couple years. That's awesome. And to see that kind of a mindset of right. like, look, I've got, you know, I've made it now. Yeah. I've gotten to, you know, the pinnacle of, of my sports career. Mm -hmm. And to remember, you know, he didn't have a night he didn't rent out a nightclub in Vegas. No. Nope. And, you know, have, I don't know, some big name, yeah. you know, perform there. He was at the homeless shelter back to and his roots to see that was one of those things where you know again i'm a steelers mark right anything right. they do but that was one of those things where i had non-steelers fans are like it looks like you guys picked up a really good kid like yes. that seems like he's grounded he's not Definitely. about the bling and the nightclub and the you know which nothing wrong with that yeah nothing but wrong with that sometimes problems come with that you yeah. know what i mean so if you got your and you see this a lot you get 19 year old kids um, and we're going to talk about a 20-year-old kid from right, Oregon. Right, But, you know, you get these kids, and if they've got, like, the posse that comes with them, sometimes right. the problems come with them. Yeah. And I've heard, like, Michael uh, Irvin and Deion Sanders say, sometimes you got to say, you got to part ways right. with that if that's going to bring you drama. Exactly. But you don't understand that at 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't understood any of that yeah. at 20. I would have brought the whole party with me, like, as many people as possible. And now to see kids that are 20, 21, and they're having their draft party at a homeless shelter. Yeah, making um, making a conscious yes. decision of, of their life and, and his, his, I don't know, character. I mean, not that, you know what I mean? Like, he did that on his own. Right. And so I think that that says 100% says what an amazing heart and, and that God lives inside of him. Right. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to cry. You're going to cry? I always Nicky's cry. He's going to cry on a show. I always That's cry. That's news. That's but news. I think it's amazing um, that, and I think I think a lot of his um, his life experiences has given him, you know, the strength and uh, to do these kind of things, and, and definitely um, God, yeah. you know, is pushing him through his mountain, so... Very spiritual. Very spiritual. We're having spiritual. a spiritual moment here on there the show. There you go. Made me cry. Naki's got tears, which is a good uh, thing because no. that means we're talking about things we feel, right, we believe right. in. So let's talk about the so kid from Oregon. Good kid. Uh, Penny Sewell. Yes. The number seven pick overall. Wow. He um, went to the Lions. He went to the Lions. One of the Niners. things that, as I was watching the draft, the uh. team that picked before the Lions was the Bengals. And... NFL Hall of Famer, maybe the greatest offensive lineman of all time, Anthony mm -hmm. Munoz, played for the Bengals, and he was one of the analysts, and mm -hmm. he was saying that this kid could be another one of him. Mm -hmm. And the Bengals passed on him. And the Bengals need offensive linemen. I don't understand Who it. Who is over there? I don't understand it, but I'm a Steelers fan. The Bengals are in the division of the Steelers. When they passed on them, <laughs> I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to root against that, but I don't know. I don't understand why it happened. Um, to me, when you've got Anthony Munoz saying mm -hmm. this is a kid that could be a Hall of Fame career, 
Um, and he's like the biggest, you know, the, the, one of the most decorated Bengals to play of all time. Right. And they pass on him. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that the lions were, were happy when right. they didn't take him. Well, so the lions take Sewell number seven overall. What a huge leap born in Malayimi, American Samoa. Samoa. Yeah. Um, all the way to the big lights of the NFL draft. The kid is 20 years old. He doesn't turn 21 till October. Wow. I mean, he, and you were telling me that his family seen his talent. His yeah, his uh so he played football I guess in American Samoa and his father recognized the level of talent that he and his brothers had mm -hmm. and packed up the family and went to St. George, um Utah, Southern Utah. Not a lot in St. George. I've actually flown into St. George. There's a postage stamp, little tiny, scary airport there. We opened a, the company that I work with opened a store there, and I thought I was going to die when we were landing on thing. It's like they shut off the engines to put the airplane down. That's how small of a town St. George is. Um, and so the, he gets recognized there. He goes to Oregon, has a great career, dominant. So... If you've seen the clips, if you watched the draft, you saw clips of him pancaking guys. I mean, just putting people on their backs. Mm -hmm. um, so young, too. Yeah. So young. He's only 20. I was talking to Mo this morning. Um, I was like, we're going to talk about the draft. And, and Mo went on and on about this kid. He's like, he's 6'6", 325 pounds, and he's like fast, like you Great said. Feet. Great feet. Yeah. He's like, he's like, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Like, yeah. And they're, he's... He hasn't even gotten on the NFL field yet, and people are really already calling him a Hall of Famer. Barring injuries, because yeah. injuries could happen to anybody. Right. But barring right. injuries, the, this kid, the the ceiling, uh, how high he could go. Mm -hmm. He's twenty. You know, he's still getting he's better. So he's young. one of the best players in yeah. the draft, and he's still getting better. Yeah, yeah, and I love and that. And he's not on a Bengals. He's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he should be on the Niners. I'm just saying. Um, what I love is that I've seen a speech um, of him saying um, his parents worked so hard and, and believed in him and and they don't have to work another day in their life. <laughs> so um, that's awesome. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to all the the kids that were not kids, young men that were picked up in the NFL this week. I think his uh, I think Panay's brothers are both in college playing oh, football, geez. too. I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, I think one's at, I can't remember. But they're both, there's there's two other brothers that are, yeah. um, you know, probably going to go to the NFL, too. Um, what else? We had, um, there was another, am I really going to bring up this? It's another 49er draft, Talanoa Hufanga. Yeah. Um, plays, get this, he's a safety mm -hmm. from USC. Yes. Raised in Oregon. Oh, wow. So he's got all the Troy Polamalu, Polamalu roots, right? And Troy worked with him in the off season. Nice. Um, so yeah, that that could turn out to be um, big Huge. news. Yeah. yeah, big pickup because it wasn't you know that wasn't a first round kind of pick thing. Right. But when you look at the the pedigree, yeah. and working with Troy, right, um, in the off season, I guess I read a, an interview with. Uh, Talanoa, and he was talking about how Troy was talking about being in the moment, mm -hmm. like don't look too far ahead, just right. take care of the of business at hand. So yeah. good. That's a good mentor to have because he's yeah. really he's not that. You know what I mean? He's yeah. not the big flashy kind of personality. Like yeah. he's very down to earth. Yeah, I'm happy for all all of the the I'm young sure there's men. Probably way way more we didn't know right. mention, but those are the ones we kind of picked out. Yeah. To, to a mention handful. and talk about. I'm just I just picked out the Niners uh, draft picks. A handful of the, I don't know anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody else. I just picked out the Niners uh, draft pick. But yeah, really big congratulations to all the young men that got picked up uh, this week. I don't think they're done though, right? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not I don't sure. know. We gonna go to break. We going to break? Yeah, we going to break. Are we going to be? Did you ha quick want to half. throw some other? NFL drafts uh, from Pittsburgh? No, I'm just Najee really Harris is yeah. really, that's the, the Steelers, every position they needed, they draft. They needed a tight end, an offensive right. lineman, a, a center, a linebacker, and a running back. They drafted each one of those. It doesn't yeah. mean that every one of those are going to be, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough year for the Steelers this year. So yeah. hopefully they put things together. I think it's Ben's last year. Um, he's been around since 
A long time. A long time. <laughs> he's been playing for a long, long time. He's been playing for, we would think of it as an incredibly, unbelievably long career if there weren't some guy named Tom Brady around that's been around yeah. longer and winning Super Bowls. Right. Like, that guy needs to leave the league. He's won enough. Yeah. Get him out. <laughs> he won't, though. He won't, though. So we're going to go to break. You're listening to the FICA broadcast. We're going to be playing a song called Bodega from Us Marley, Bay Area Kid. Go check out his stuff on uh, everything, SoundCloud, Spotify. Follow him on all social media outlets. We'll be right back. Maybe. It's like... I don't even know how to put it in words, though. You feel me? Just let it vibe. Posted outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, getting paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that top. No, I walk that walk. Holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Posted outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, getting paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that top. No, I walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Holding it down till I drop. Rolling that loud till I'm up. Damn, change when shit flop. Not to roost them, try and chop. Bounce the ground from different spots. Top rhyming all in the pop. Power lifting and shifting. I'm busting missions all through the block. Slug in the Milwaukee Bucks. Glizzy pressure the ups. Change like seasons, they bluff. Spade tight wheels running up. Flipping lalas, Nina love your sleeping beauty. Them off. Yeah, yeah. Posted outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, getting paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that top. No, I walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Posted outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, getting paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that top. No, I walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Say he nice, posted that up. All we ever wanted was a lot. I don't know only nothing else, I swear. Used to be getting taken, we don't care. Remember days I ain't had when this shit posted up by the bodega. You can play with me, cause I'm not average. We gon' get to it now and not later. I can vibe if you ain't getting paid. Ain't no the business, don't worry about hating. Lately, I feel like I can't do no more favors. Only the family tonight, I'm smooth. Every week around, gotta get to the loop. On the front, Lord, to yourself a dude. I'm with the ones who put you on the news. Steppers, but humble, hold, don't get confused. Posted outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, getting paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that top. No, I walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Post it outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, getting paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that top. No, I walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'ma hold it down till I drop, never gonna stop, gotta stay solid, yeah I'm gonna hold it down till I drop, never gonna stop, gotta stay solid, yeah uh -huh. Hey, and we're back. You're listening to the FICA broadcast. I am Naki. With me, as always, is Carl. Good morning. Good morning. And our Mena Mena, who is our everything under the sun, um, Essence of Mana. Essence of Mana is offering free classes via Zoom. They're reaching out to our PI community, and it doesn't matter where you live because it's virtual. You just got to be willing to commit to the course, which is 12 weeks. For more information or to register, you can hit up Lulu Masina at 415-243-6328 or El Masina at healthright360.org. They also have Talanoa Tuesdays on Essence of Mana's Facebook page at 7 p.m. This week, their guest was Dr. Finau Sina Tesa Tovo. She was, she's the founder and coordinator for the Mana Pacific Studies Learning Community at the College of San Mateo. Also, Journey to Empowerment, Storytelling Through Film is happening this Friday, May 7th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time via Zoom. Uh, Lulu Masina is your contact once again. That's 415-243-6328. Yay. Who else do we have? Koviki Talk. 
Um, episode 25 is happening tomorrow. Pacifica Narratives Chukis Community featuring Triple J Kaminanga, uh, Juanita Monessa Kim Yasu, and Joseph Saya. With the earrings. With this earrings, Joseph Saya. Monday at 5 p.m. You can watch it on our Poly by Design Facebook page and the Pacific Islander COVID-19 Response Team page. Tune in tomorrow to vote who has better earrings. There you Joseph go. Saya Tune or in. Naki. To see who got the better earrings. I'm, How about I'm that? I'm betting on Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Joseph? Um, so, yeah, that's happening tomorrow at 5 p.m. Please tune in. It's a great program. Pacific Islander information about COVID. This week on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, yes, Wednesday, was Snacky with Naki. And we actually were going to do it on Saturday night, went to dinner, and then just couldn't. And then, because uh, it was in me not to give it away. Um, but Wednesday. That makes sense, though. It, yeah. You got to feel you it. You know, I went to dinner with Mo and uh, my lay, my daughter, and I just was not feeling it. Like, everything in me was fighting it, right? And I was like, I just, I can't. And so um, I was like, I got to get rid of this money, though, because we collected $750. So if you don't know what Snacky with Naki is, it is um, we ask um, people to send us 50 cents, right? You find 50 cents in your couch. 50 cents. $25. 50 cents. That's it. Five zero. 50 cents, people. Half of a dollar. Not 50 bucks like some people gave. Not $25. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can give whatever you want, but what I'm asking you to give is 50 cents. And at the end of the week, whatever I collect, um, I go to eat or snacky somewhere, and it's either the server or the restaurant or whatever will get whatever I collect. And so this last week, we collected $750, which is freaking amazing Mm -hmm. it's amazing when we started i thought oh i'll get a hundred and two hundred dollars and that's a great tip for anybody bucks 50 bucks 75 dollars is a great tip yes anything is a great tip and so we collected 750 dollars. so i get up wednesday because i'm off and i look on instagram because that's what i do and uh kaipo kitchen and they were they sell lion king fries let me say that again for the people in the back. Lion King fries with shrimp. You can get it without shrimp, but I'm a shrimp girl. So I get on Instagram and I see and I go, ooh, I'm so hungry because I'm fat like that. And I, I go, man And then I go, let's, let's order from Kaipo Kitchen. Let's order their shrimp. So um, because of the pandemic, you order online like, like, um, Toke Moana, Mm -hmm. you order online, or you can go in, um, but we found it easier to order online, place your order, tell them what time you're picking up, and so uh, Mena did that. She ordered us um, all Lion King fries, which is fries with this crazy, amazing sauce, and they had, like, deep-fried shrimp, deep-fried salmon, crab, over fries, and Mm. then these this orange and yellow sauce that I died over. So we get there and I tell Molesi Jr. Sangapolutele, good morning, thank you for tuning in. I I have ADD, so I'm everywhere. So anyway, we call or we text Kaipo Kitchen. And mind you, we live in Fairfield area and- You're driving to where? We're driving to South San Francisco, Uh which is an hour or so, a little bit over an hour away. it don't matter what well, we, when we do. So I'm like, let's do snacky with Naki when we get there. Let's just give the money away. It's a Pacific Islander owned business. And the amazing thing about this place is it's in Ohana, um, Ohana United. So Ohana United is a restaurant in South San Francisco. It's run by Ray Serrano, who is the poke man. Mm. And we've had his poke. He has a food truck that is he sells poke. And so if you love poke, that Carl and I have had it a couple of times. Um, And he also, Ray, does knives. He does these amazing art on these, like, I don't know, butcher knives. And I've gotten Mo a couple for his birthday, which they're amazing. I'll I'll have to bring it in so you can see it. So you, um, good morning. So we get Ohana United. Let me start over. 
Ohana United is run by Ray Serrano, who is the Pokemon. So what he did was he rents this space or has this restaurant, and he and um, Island Huli and uh, Kaipo Kitchen they share this space. So or and then you, he rents it out to PI chefs. So that you can sell your food there, which is freaking amazing. So is it, are they all there at once or is like certain, certain, certain days, certain is days certain, are certain yes, businesses? Yes. Ah. Yes. And so it's amazing. It's a, it's a great plan. It's an amazing idea. I love that Ray did this. And so that day was Kaipo Kitchen. So we order our food, we get there. And the girl that takes our order, um, who of course asked for her name, her name was Mele. And she's pregnant and we see her kids is running around. They kind of blocks it off because you can only, only pick up at the restaurant. Right. And you can see that it's a restaurant, but because of the pandemic, they're closed down. So um, I talked to Mele. We we tell her we're there to pick up our food, and her and her husband um, run the place. And I can see the kids running around. She's so cute. Um, so then we, when it's time to pay for our food, we pay for our food. Our food is ready, and we tell them they have a tip jar there. And so we said I'd like to tip you guys, and um, we explained that we collected this money from our podcast and which by the way, we'd love to have them on. And, um, this is how much we collected $750 and the, you have to go watch the video. If you haven't seen it, it's on all our social media, um, outlets. And he says, Oh, you're the lady that tips everybody. And I said, yeah, <laughs> that's me. And so he's the most animated guy. Oh my God. Ever I loved had. him. On Snacky with Nappy. Yeah. Most guys are like, guys, you're like, oh, thanks. Yes. This is really I cool. I was like, thank God. He this was guy <laughs> was like, yeah. Yeah. And he was, woohoo. So we give them the $750. Um, Mela is crying. You know, of course, she's emotional because she's pregnant. When you're pregnant, you're emotional anyway. So um, she really got me to tears. And Miley, who was with me, me and Miley walked away crying because we were so overwhelmed from the feeling that you get of, um, Giving. Giving. Yeah. The feeling of giving is freaking amazing. Like, you can't even, I can't even explain it because you have to actually be there to, I think, um, it's the whole reason why we do what we do. Um, and sometimes I forget and um, reactions or feelings like that, no matter who it is, whether you have a reaction or not, when we hand you over the tips that we've collected for the day um, or the week, um, it's overwhelming. It's an overwhelming uh, emotion. I can't even explain, but um, me and my lay were like crying, um, walking back to the car because the feeling of giving is just it yeah, when you see over. the when you see true gratitude, right? When you see somebody that's moved or touched by something you've right. done for them. That's an exchange. Yes. That's an exchange of emotion. And right. that's where things like and build. You get tears, you get, you know, goosebumps, you right. get those kind of things from those moments. Because right. you give and you're giving whatever and it's received kind of like, yeah, all right, thanks. Yeah. Like there's not that synergy. But when you get somebody who's like touched, yeah. like they I, they said something about, um, I think she had said something about money. You yeah. know what I mean? That. It just came at the right time. Yes. Like it was a gift from God. It right. Was, like that, man, that, that gets you in the feels. That yes. gets everybody on yeah. both sides in yeah. the feels. Yeah. And you never know what people are going through. You just never know what people are going through. So whether we hear your story or we don't hear your story, um, we know that everyone is struggling. I remember the one lady in Oakland that we had. It was mm -hmm. like her second, second day. Second day back. Second day back to work. She had been laid off all year. And then we tipped her. I think we collected $1,000 that week. And she was just crying and you didn't even have to hear her story you knew um that people are struggling struggling right now and so any way we can help um giving give whatever yeah and that's really know. everybody that's it's all everybody. the listeners yeah. everybody who gave 50 cents yes like that's an amazing feeling thank like, you we just so got a bunch much. of people to give 50 cents and then we pull it together and then that's really where naki is putting her money where her mouth is right, right. she's walking it like she talks it where she says support your your local pi businesses support your, yeah here she is taking the money that she get that you all gave right. that the listeners and the followers gave to a local pacific islander business yeah. that it came at the right time like right. these they were going yes. through things that god let right. god god totally led us 
to their establishment because you know i was at a, at a, a big chain restaurant on saturday and just was not feeling it and i believe that was god pulling me saying hold up hold right. up i got someone for you so and uh, you know we always we want to support our pacific islanders and i wore my levasa uh, sweatshirt like which Levasa. Levasa, you have your Levasa t-shirt on and so he was a guest that we had on we support our Pacific Island oh my gosh entrepreneurs and people were asking me where did you get your sweatshirt where did you get your? So I was like oh I and then I had to go back in and say hey my sweatshirt was from Levasa um, who is a PI um, entrepreneur who sells clothing um, so you know we try to wear um, the stuff that we get from people that we people gift us that we purchase we really don't like for you to gift us <laughs> we want to <laughs> pay yeah we want to pay and support you so i love i love that um we found a pi business we don't always go to pi businesses right. i'm not saying that we hit just pi businesses we hit wherever god leads us um so um it was a great feeling to give 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 um i love that family they were so grateful and so you know the food is good let me just tell you those fries were off the hook. Best Lion King fries well, we're gonna get ever. Some of those. We're, we're going to so, do that again. Yeah, we need to do that, and we will be back there just saying, Melis, so look for me. Um, <laughs> but, but that's the that's the thing, right? When we say shop Pacifica, yes. it's not buy a you know a dumb sweatshirt that you won't buy. Yeah. Like if you're going to buy a sweatshirt, yes. shop Pacifica first. Right. There's plenty of cool sweatshirts yes. that you can wear and be happy with. It's not like you're going to go to a PI place to get bad food. Like, right. I'm just going to support Pacific Islander businesses yes. and go someplace and have bad food. It's amazing food. So the right. products that our, our PI business people are putting right. out there is quality, quality stuff. Yes, quality stuff. So Kaipo Kitchen, please go follow them on Instagram. Island Huli, follow them. Also follow the Pokemon, Poke Ray Man. Serrano, and, and check out his knives that he sells. He always sells out. So... Um, it's it, it was a great feeling. I love Snacky with Naki. I just don't have the time to do it. Like I was doing it every week, um, and now it's like maybe twice a month because we are crazy, crazy busy, but I want to help as many people as we can. And so I'll be starting back up on Monday, um, and then who knows where, where God will lead us the next time. So it was an amazing feeling. Good morning to Mele Hangale Toavi, uh, Hopi. Good morning, Sister morning, Hopi. Hopi. So, yeah, it was a great, great time. Um, um, we just, I can't stress how amazing those fries were. Um, so I encourage you to go to South San Francisco. I drove an hour away to go get those fries. So go, go, go. Um, what else do we have? Uh, golfing with pool. Yes. Yes, Do It for Pua Golf Tournament is happening Saturday, July 31st. We are a proud sponsor. sponsor. You will, I don't know which golf hole you'll see PBD, but um, we uh, will be there in spirit. We'll actually try to get there and maybe uh, take pictures and stuff. Uh, Mena was talking about taking her camera there. So July 31st, if you'd like to join the tournament, please get a hold of Tally. Uh, I will post the flyer on Instagram. They, um, Pua, uh, who is a family family friend, he passed away last year in a car accident, and he left behind his beautiful wife, Karen, and his children. And so they're having a golf tournament um, to raise money um, for him and or for his family. So uh, PBD is sponsoring a hole. That didn't sound right. So we're sponsoring a hole. Look at your <laughs> mind. Look at your mind. Yeah, so it's Do It for Pua Golf Tournament on Saturday, July 31st. Maybe we'll hang out at that. If we it's the fifteenth, the nineteenth, the nineteenth, we won't be at the bar. It's not the nineteenth hole. Yeah, we might is be the at 19th the nineteenth hole a bar. Yeah, there's only eighteen holes on a golf course. Oh, the nineteenth hole, hole is, is considered the bar. Oh, yeah. we might be at the nineteenth hole. <laughs> we might be at the nineteenth hole. It's July. Everything supposedly will open up June fifteenth, so we may be there. I think I'm going to put it on the calendar. But yes, please go support. Uh, do it for Pua golf tournament saturday july 31st i have posted the flyer a couple of times um you'll see a hole with pvd's name on it how about that 
Do you have a fire up, Mena? Yes, yes. Oh, Mena's so good. Do it for Pua Golf Tournament and Fundraiser. All proceeds go to the Taliba'a family. It's at Diablo, Diablo Creek Golf Course. How about that? Mm-hmm. It's going to be nice and warm. In Concord. It's hot it's in Concord. It's going to be nice and warm on July 31st. Ooh, I could get my tan on. <laughs> and you bring sunscreen, drink lots of water. Um, it's going to be hot. It's going to happen in July, but it's it's all for a good cause. How about that? Um, what else do we got going on? Uh, I think that's all of our... Journey to Empowerment. Oh, we do have Journey to Empowerment because it's the first Friday of the month. Yes. Every first Friday of the month, Journey to Empowerment. Did you talk about that already? We did not. Oh, oh okay. Not. Journey to Empowerment. They're doing storytelling through film. Their guest is going to be professor or doctor uh, Ursula Ann Siatanga. Uh, it's at 6.30 p.m. this Friday. Contact Lulu if you are looking for the link. That's uh, one of the programs I'm most looking forward to when things open back up and that starts up again. Yeah, that in is person. In person, right? In person. So they do an amazing job virtually. It is one of those things where uh, you will be surprised how engaging it is. There's everyone that I go to, I'm always like, how engaging can they make it this time? Because oh, last amazing. time we did, you know, and every time, like, they find a new way to get you involved. And uh, Sister Ursula is so creative that I have no doubt that it's going to be the same kind of surprise mm-hmm. this Friday. But I am, that is one of those where I can't wait to attend in li- live and in person a Journey to Empowerment because that's really where. That's where I, in my ideas, my mind, Poly by Design started because it was yeah. that those events that we went that to. That kind of feeling. Kind yeah. of tripped us off. Kiki Victoria is on. She's like, thank you for sabotaging my summer body with the Lion King fries. <laughs> yes, girl, go get those fries. You skinny already. Um, so I think we've covered everything we needed to cover um, this past Tuesday, we had Lunga and Sosefina Pita, Lunga Alifosia, um, on FICA Tuesday. Talking about your financial situation. Financial. How to get, become better off. Yes. So go follow them. Go check out the interview. It's on our, our, our Poly by Design page. It was a great interview by those two. They have Mana One, uh, but also their People Helping People page. So check them out and go, go, go. So... Uh, anything else? You got any shout outs? You got anything else going on this week? Uh, not this week. Um, no, just my daughter, Malia, continues to move all of her things out. Aww. There's always one more thing. And then we're cleaning out the garage. and We're like, hey, do you want this? She's like, nope. Uh, yeah. So Did happy you- moments, sad moments. Yeah. Yeah. It is sad when the children start to leave the nest. Mm-hmm. Start to leave the nest. I got Two down, three to go. Three to go. <laughs> um, Koviki Talk is happening tomorrow, like I said, 5 p.m. Koviki Talk happens every Monday at 5 p.m. Check out me, Carl, and the whole team. Dr. Nia, Tavai Samuelu, Christine, and Beverly will be coming to you tomorrow at Monday, 5 p.m. Um, again, it's the Chukis community. And so 5 p.m. Check us out. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We appreciate your time and space. We are here every Sunday, 10-ish. And so uh, check us out. Come back to FICA with us. Love y'all. I don't even know how to put it in words, though. Feel me? Just lay by. Posted outside the bodega. With my brothers every night getting paper. To the bubble pot, gonna chalk that talk. No one walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Post it outside the bodega. With my brothers every night, get a paper. To the bubble pop, gonna chalk that talk. No one walk that walk, holding it down till I drop. Yeah, yeah. Holding it down till I drop. Rolling that loud till I'm up. Done. Change when she flop, and I table them try and chop. Bounce the ground from different spots. Top rhyming all in the pop. Power lifting and shifting. I'm busting missions all through the block. Slugging that Milwaukee Bucks. Glizzy pressure the ups. Change.